What's up? This is Yuda Ben Atar, second video of Ableton Preferences Tutorials. Uh, so let's jump right to it. I'm going to go to Live, Preferences, or Command Comma, or Control Comma on a PC. So we're going to talk about the Audio tab today. First, we got the Audio Device section. Um, if you're on a Mac, the driver type is going to be Core Audio. If you're on a PC, I would recommend downloading a different driver which will give you better performance. Uh, one of the drivers I can recommend is ASIO for All. I'll put a link uh, in the video description. Next is the audio input and audio output devices. Those are or your built-in output and built-in mic or any type of audio interface that you have connected. Um, if you have an audio interface connected, for example Soundflower, um, that have more than two inputs, you can also configure the active inputs, stereo or mono, and of course also the output, which I only have uh, two at a time because I'm using the built-in output. Nice. Sample rate. Sample rate, this will determine what's going to be the sample rate for any recorded, uh, generated, and the output of Ableton Live. You can change that. You will see different numbers according to the driver type and the audio interface. Um, and if you go higher than 44100, it will give you more resolution, especially for recorded audio, but the files are also going to be a lot larger. Next is the default, um, the pitch conversion. You should put it on high quality. That means that any new audio file uh, will already be in high quality mode. So if I'm going to record something here with my built-in mic, Okay, record something, and I'm going to go inside the clip. We can see here it's already in high quality mode. This will make sure uh, it's high quality interpolation for the audio clip. You should have it unless you have some CPU problems, and then you can take it off, which will ease up a tiny bit on the CPU. Let's go back to the preferences. Next is the latency, which is very important. Um, buffer size. I would recommend putting it on 128. If you have a very strong computer, you can even go smaller than that. Um, that will give you the lowest latency possible. You mostly care about the overall latency. If you're working on a project that is very heavy and you see your CPU kind of going crazy, you even hear some audio dropouts or noises, you can take it up, which will ease up on uh, the CPU. Driver error compensation is only when using audio interfaces. Some audio interfaces don't declare um, the latency correctly, so you can compensate here. If you want to check if your audio interface have some driver errors, what you can do is go to Help Menu, Help View, scroll all the way down to Show All Built-in Lessons, go down, and click on Driver Error Compensation. This will offer you to open a new live set. Here you will get a tom sound. And what you will need to do is connect an actual physical connection between one of your outputs of your interface to one of the inputs of your interface. And this will take you a step by step of what you need to do. And then you can see how much uh, driver error compensation you need to set up right here. And finally, the test tone. Uh, test tone, if I'm turning it on, this is the volume, this is the frequency, and you can even uh, simulate um, CPU usage. We can see here on 50. This is also a great way to check your room for any acoustic problems. What you want to do is just sweep the frequency and see if anything is getting boosted or um, or de uh, decreased in volume and you know you have problems in those frequencies in your room. So that's it for the audio tab. Check out the next video for the link MIDI tab. Catch you later.